This episode is sponsored by NHS or National Honor Society. The National Honor Society is an association honoring students who perform at a very high level in the classroom. And the quote or uh, national reference for the National Honor Society is noblesse oblige, simply kind of talking about the responsibilities that come with being in the National Honor Society, how you are held to a higher standard, how you are expected to perform at a certain level. NHS is sponsored by Mr. John Reardon, and you can contact him at jreardon at clarkcounty.k12.mo.us. Thank you to the National Honor Society for sponsoring this episode. That intro was not nearly as good as mine. We'll just go with yours. Yeah. Hi! This is Rise of the James, ladies and gentlemen. This is Luke James and Brain James, where we are talking about sports. And today, we're going to be talking about the AFC East in particular, because it is a wild division, especially after the New England Patriots have been catching fire recently. So before we start talking, actually breaking down the division, let's talk about where every team stands. First, you got the Bills sitting at six and two at the top of the division. Then you have the Jets at six and three behind them. And third, we have Dolphins also at six and three. Finally, Patriots five and four. They are the only division in football that have a winning record across the board. Exactly, and that's really good. That's really difficult to do in the NFL. Just again, because think of how, how many teams there are, uh, especially this year with how it seems like almost every team is stuck in the same level of mediocrity. Uh, but here's my biggest thing, is the fact that the Bills currently sit at the top, but it's important to remember that the Bills have had a bye week already, and the, and the Jets uh, the Jets beat the Bills last week. you know. And so kind of, did you watch the Bills and Jets game? Maybe if you could break it down a little bit. Kind of say what went wrong for the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen didn't really play that good. He could run the ball, but he had two picks, I believe. Uh, Sauce Gardner had a great pick, mm -hmm. and he had that injury that may impact his throwing nerve injury. Yeah, and that's really important to think about when you're a quarterback because Baker Mayfield, we saw he had one injury that he was dealing with last year, and his production dropped off a cliff. And I think that, like, you know, because Josh Allen is probably, is by far the most important part of the Bills' offense. We saw that last year. And even though Baker, you know, they had Nick Chubb, they had... Jarvis, they had OBJ for a bit. You know, they could kind of make up for the lack of quarterback talent, or at least with his injury, but the Bills can't afford that. They can afford it defensively, but offensively, I mean, Stephon Diggs is great, yeah, but, I mean, again, Stephon Diggs, he is an all, he's a top five receiver in the league this year, but the thing is, is that it's just him. Those are, their, those are your pieces on offense. You have Diggs and Allen, and when Allen goes out, it's going to be hard for Diggs to pick up the slack. Like Case Keenum is their backup. He's not a terrible quarterback, but he's nowhere close to yeah. as good as Josh Allen is. And their running attack, they just they're non existent running the ball. Josh Allen is their leading rusher. Yeah. Yeah, and that's probably their biggest thing is the fact that they don't have a running game. And yeah, of course it's the NFL, right? So it's just natural for teams to slowly ease into passing more. That's just kind of been the name of the game, is the fact that more and more teams pass the ball. And it makes sense when you have arms like Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, uh, Patrick Mahomes, guys who can really throw the ball well. It's, it's, it's obvious to use that. But, again, when you are solely pass commit, I mean, it's, first, it's, it's difficult to score all the time when you're pass commit first and foremost. I mean, yeah, the, and their defense especially carries them if Josh Allen – is out yeah. for a couple of weeks. Which, I mean, the fact that they held that Jets defense, the Jets offense has been pretty good this year. The fact that they held that Jets offense to 20 points really shows how good the Bills defense is. I mean, the Bills had one of the better defenses in the NFL, I think, last year. And then they picked up Vaughn Miller. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? That's, 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 even though Vaughn Miller, he, he kind of been on his way out. A lot of people thought he was in Denver. But when he got traded to LA, I think that was the jolt he needed to get back to that. Pro Bowl level of talent that we've seen him do so many times in the past. And so far, Von Miller, he's been carrying that production into Buffalo. Yeah, he got paid too. He got paid a lot of money. He did, and he's been pouring in his keep so far. Now we have the Jets, 
once again, like I said, sitting at six and three, second in the division. They're on and off, honestly, mm -hmm. this year. I mean, you lose to the Patriots and then beat the Bills. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the Jets this year are probably the biggest surprise team in the NFL, I think. Uh, that or maybe uh, them or the Seahawks, I think. Also the, Ram also, the Rams being so bad was also a bit of a surprise team, but in a different way. Uh, but the biggest thing is with the Jets is the fact that they're winning games. I think that's just the most important thing because right now the Jets are setting themselves up for a playoff spot. They're in the, at the season ended today, the they're in the playoffs. And that is so much improvement from the year past. And people were coming into the year. I heard some people saying the Jets were going to go 0-17. Because people never know, you never know what the Jets, actually a lot of times you do know what the Jets, uh, simply the fact that they a lot of times don't have talent. Like the talent is always their issue. Like if you think about it, their best player in the past 10 years, probably like Michael Vick. And that's even and Michael later Vick, years. Yeah, that was at the end of his career in his final season. And that's the fact that, again, the Jets haven't made the playoffs since 2010. That's their biggest issue is that it, I feel like if they can get back to the postseason, then they're going to start getting that momentum because they're a New York team, and New York teams always have a market, you know, because New York's a city that attracts a lot of fans, attracts a lot of players. I mean, they're 4-0 on the road. That's also huge mm -hmm. when you think about that. Uh, Robert Sala has been really good as a coach, honestly, helping that defense out. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the biggest improvement from this year to last year was for the Jets? Because, again, last year they were the worst team in the NFL probably, or like one of the worst. This year, playoffs. They beat probably the best team in the NFL, minus the Eagles. So, again, what has been the, what has been the biggest thing of improvement? I think that draft class that they drafted in the spring really brought a big like spark to that offense slash defense. I mean, Brees Hall – Provided mm -hmm. a great spark until he got injured. I mean, you look at receivers, not from this year, but last year you had Elijah Moore. He's not being as involved, really frustrated with the offense. But, I mean, you can get him a little bit and more involved, and then the offense will get going a little bit in the passing game. Yeah, and that's probably the thing I'm worried about, the Jets falling off simply because they lost their best offensive weapon, which is Brees Hall. And, yeah, they replaced him with James Robinson, which was a great trade for the Jets, by the way, the fact that they uh, only gave up a sixth-round pick for a above-average running back when healthy. Granted, he's been dealing with a lot of injuries this year, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, but even so, it doesn't matter what team you are. We were kind of talking about this with the Bills, too. When you lose your best offensive weapon, your offense becomes a little more stagnant and you start to become more predictable because you don't have as many options. So, again... So, because like when you formulate an NFL offense, it's more of like, this is my number one guy. We're going to go to them most of the time. And then our backup is this guy and this guy. Well, when you take out that number one, it's like you're only going to this guy or this guy. And I think that's what the Jets are going to fall into this year. And simply, I think it's going to be a matter of if the defense, if the defensive coordinators can watch enough film on the Jets to figure out their offensive game plan. Because I don't think the Jets are too difficult of a team to figure out. I think it's more of just them catching people by surprise, and again, sometimes the NFL is a little bit of luck. Yeah, they just comeback wins also. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of teams that have multiple weapons, though, the yeah. Dolphins sitting at 6-3 and three with Tyreek and Waddle. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good offense to have there. I mean, Tagovailoa last year was kind of clowned quite a bit for his, I guess, weakness of his arm and, and accuracy. So this year he's really turned that around. I mean, we saw Teddy Bridgewater play, barely play. Like uh, the Dolphins were sit, were put in a really bad situation after the whole concussion uh, fiasco that went on in like week two, week three, or something like that. And the biggest thing that we saw out of that was simply that first off, Teddy Bridgewater can still play. Second off is that I think a lot of Dolphins fans and, lot, and maybe even the Dolphins went into panic mode. Because after what happened on that Thursday night football game, people thought that Tua might have been shut down for the year. I mean, yeah, Tua, Tua's been huge for them. When he starts and finishes the game, they are undefeated, which mm -hmm. that is really good for Tua, showing them haters wrong. Yeah, because Tagovailoa, um, his biggest thing was that he received a lot of hate last year, especially because of how the way they started. His play, though, towards the end of the year didn't really improve much. It was more of the fact that his defense was playing better. And 
the, and the biggest thing with Tagovailoa, I think, has simply been the fact that he worked in, on his game in the offseason, and he has improved strides. Like, again, his arm accuracy is better. His arm strength is better. He reads the field much better. He runs the ball at a, a more effective rate. Sometimes he was a little too rush happy, I think. But now, he again, he only rush, he rushes when he sees holes in the offensive line. You know, and it helps him create opportunities. Yeah, they just didn't have that when Tua was hurt. I mean, you had Skylar Thompson, who was born in Palmyra, Missouri, before moving in there at quarterback. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't provide anything of what Tua was capable of. Yeah, I, I mean, that's just, I mean, you can't really help that. I mean, some people, like, you can't see foresee. Like, I think that they had a good backup quarterback. Like, I was kind of talking about this. Uh, granted, we weren't doing a podcast or anything, but I was kind of talking about this is the fact that I think that the Dolphins probably have the best backup quarterback in the NFL. I think, well, granted, the Cooper Rush thing happened. But, um, I mean, who do you think is a better backup than Teddy Bridgewater? Teddy Bridgewater is a guy who could start on a lot of teams. He's been consistent every single place he went. He had that stint with the Saints coming in as the backup, dominated there, and mm -hmm. that's probably what got him this job also. Yeah, because, again, we saw him in Denver. He wasn't bad in Denver, but his biggest thing was injuries. Uh, he was good in Minnesota. He took them to a couple playoff runs, I think. Uh, in Carolina, he was decent in Carolina until his best offensive weapon got injured. And so I thought that if there was any team that could afford losing their quarterback for a certain amount of time, it was the Dolphins because they have Teddy Bridgewater. But, like, on the, one of the first snaps of the game when Teddy Bridgewater went out, they had to go to the Palmyra kid. And Palmyra sucks. So, I mean, that was kind of, I mean, that, it wasn't going to end very well for Denver. I mean, uh, excuse me, the Dolphins. They did make a great trade for Bradley Chubb, though. I'll, I'll credit mm -hmm. them on that. You got Jeff Wilson also they traded mm -hmm. for. They're, I don't know what they're doing with both running backs from former 49er players yeah. with Raheem Moster and Jeff Wilson. I don't know what they're doing. There. But the thing is, though, if you have two good running backs, you can have a great system. I mean, the Chiefs tried to do it. I think the Chiefs are probably the biggest example of it, trying to do something with uh, Isaiah Pacero and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Though, granted, both of those running backs are kind of trash. Uh, so it doesn't end as well for them. But still, the Jaguars also tried to do a thing when ETN started rising and, uh, towards the end of the, towards the beginning of the season, where they did a James Robinson, Travis ETN thing. And I think that it'd be, the Dolphins are going to do that later on in the season come playoff time, and that's going to be really good because it's going to keep both of those guys more fresh towards the end of the games than they would. I mean, yeah, the, they just can slowly get that running game back to going. And the Patriots now mm -hmm. at 5-4, and four, they, won two in a row. Yeah. Schedule has been a little bit weaker opponents, mm -hmm. but, I mean, I don't that know. offense is yeah. weak. That's the biggest thing, I think. That is by far the biggest issue is – Mac Jones, I, people, I was clowning people all last year. If you check out um, Tristan Pitchford's podcast, you can tell, you can hear me clowning Mac Jones, uh, saying how dumb people were, thinking he should have won Rookie of the Year or he was a liable candidate. He's not a good quarterback. He threw the ball three times in a game against the Bills, and you're thinking that should win Rookie of the Year? Like no, and that's the and I think people are finally starting to see that Mac Jones, Daniel Jones, two trash quarterbacks. Um, they, that's that's not going to do it for you. Like, I mean, the Giants are doing good so far this year. I said in the last episode, I said they're pretenders. I still think they're pretenders. I think they're going to fall off a cliff. We saw it last week in a law in a game that they, granted on who their opponent, a game they probably should have won. Uh, they fell in defeat, and I think we're going to see that more with the Giants. But still, the Patriots they're kind of stuck in the same boat. Their defense is really good. They probably have a top five defense. Judon's leading the league in sacks at 11 and a half. Mm. Jonathan Jones has been really good. He had a pick six last week. Jack Jones, the rookie out of Arizona State, fourth round pick. And you have Marcus Jones, the third round pick out of Houston, who's been a great returner. Yeah, and that and again, the Patriots, they're it's two sides of the ball. You know, they say offense wins games, defense wins championships. You gotta win games to get to the championship. And we saw that so far this year, the Patriots have lost their games because of their offense. Yeah, Bailey Zappi also, but I think he got to stick with Max. Stick with your first-round pick. If we could get a couple receivers, actually like weapons, granted, Jacoby Myers is pretty good. I think he's very underrated. Jacoby Myers, he's been playing well this year. He's been, he's been, a, he's been a valuable asset. 
And you, Odell, you think there's any shot they go for them? Yeah, I think uh, – I know that Jerry Jones yesterday, I think, hinted at, um, you know, Odell looking good with the star on his helmet. But here's my – my take is Odell could go anywhere. Um, so, I mean, the Patriots are an option. You know, I think any team that is in a potential playoff picture, I think could easily go for Odell Beckham Jr. Granted, I think Beckham probably should have been signed at the beginning of the season. Uh, though, I mean, again, the, he, the fact is we saw in on the Rams, especially, I mean, the biggest example is the Super Bowl, that he's still a very talented wide receiver, and he's still a guy who is going to give you a huge boost on offense. And I think that any team is going to use him, but I think just knowing Odell Beckham Jr., he's only going to want a team that's going to have a close shot at the playoffs. And I think the, the Patriots need to get some stuff together. They need to win a couple more games, and then they can get OBJ. I mean, yeah, you, he likes good quarterbacks also. I mean, mm -hmm. he was not having Baker at all. Exactly. And Mac Jones, who I'd say is definitely worse than Baker last year. Uh, I mean, are, is that you think something like that's going to attract Odell Beckham? He did say at one point, we were in on him last year with mm -hmm. Belichick. Belichick would love to have a guy like that. He could use him perfectly. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, again, that was kind of our rundown of the AFC East. Where do you see the division standing? Pretty much, who do you think is going to finish in what place and what the record is going to be? I mean, I think Bills obviously will finish first at like over 10 wins, obviously, mm -hmm. maybe 12, roughly, depending on how Allen plays. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have Dolphins behind them, maybe 10, 11. And then Jets, Jets can finish great. But it's they just got to execute it. They can make the playoffs, but will they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you finally have Patriots. They can make the playoffs if they get that like spark they need or On anything offense. like that. Yeah. But I mean, playoffs with them is kind of a reach. Mm -hmm. So I have the Bills going thirteen and four. Um, I have the Dolphins going eleven and six. The Jets are going ten and seven. And the Patriots are going eight and nine. I think that the Patriots aren't going to get Odell Beckham Jr. Though it is an option, though it is a possibility. A lot of that depends on where he goes. Honestly, I think that you got to add probably one or two more wins than you were originally going to give whatever team he was going to go to. Um, and I'm sure in the next episode, that's probably what we're going to talk about a lot is what Odell Beckham Jr. and what he's going to add to the team he's on. And by then, he probably has made his decision. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that is going to end episode two of Rise of the James. Any closing remarks? Just win. Yep. They just got to win. <laughs> win now. Win now. All right. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in episode three.